Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this is the continuation of our previous lecture where we have worked with MongoDB using the Apache Spark where we read and write the data from MongoDB using the PySpark script. And we also seen how to use a Mongo shell. So let's discuss more about Mongo shell and its syntax. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first step would be just boot up your HDB sandbox. So I have already kept it in running position and make sure that MongoDB service is running fine without any issues. So here if you just log into the Ambari using Mari underscore dev, here you can see MongoDB service is running fine without any issues. And also I don't have any alerts in my HDB sandbox. So without wasting any time, just go to the command line by using the putty terminal and login as a maria underscore dev give maria underscore dev and we have logged in so to go to the mongo shell all you have to do is just type mongo that's it hit enter and as you can see you are in the mongo shell right now so in the previous lecture we have created a database known movie lens and created one collection named users which contains details of all the users which have rated in our movies data set. So to get that list, just you can type like show DBs, which means for data sets. So here you can see movie lens has been created. So to select this database, give like use movie lens. Okay, we have switched to movie lens. So if we give like show collections, which will give us the list of collection in this database. Here you can see we have our users table. So in the last lecture, we have used the find function to find a pattern for user ID 100. So for that, we have just given like db.users.find and in bracket, again give the curly braces. And here we have provided the user ID colon 100. So it will search for this pattern for the particular user, which in this case we have provided 100 and get us the results. So if you hit enter, as you can see, this is the object ID and we have got the age so that specific user has the age 36 as well as he's an executive and the zip code of that user. So if you take an example of this user ID, let's say if this user ID is the primary key for our collections, but in MongoDB it will not create an index for this user ID. But if we compare it to Cassandra, it will automatically create an index for the primary key. In the Cassandra tutorial, when we created a table, the user ID was the primary key and Cassandra has automatically created an index for it. And I hope you know about the index that we can create an index on the table to retrieve the results faster than a non-index table. So let's say if you are selecting the data more often on top of this user ID field, it makes sense to create an index to optimize your query execution time. So it doesn't mean that every field has to be indexed, but the specific ones which we can say it as a primary key or the fields which we use more often, it makes sense to create an index for it. So in MongoDB, you need to manually create an index for that but it will make more sense when you're dealing with big data. So in this case, as we have only hundreds of records in this table, you will not see any improvements when we create an index. But in the real world use cases where we deal with billions of records, this will definitely make your system more efficient and your queries execution time will be way more less than a non-index table. So if you just want to get the counts of this table, all you have to do is use the count function. So for that, just give like db.users.count brackets. And if you hit enter, as you can see, only 943 records are present. So if you create the index right away for this table, it will not show any drastic improvements in the performance because we're not dealing with big data here. But to get you a clear idea how this indexing works, let me show you the explain chart for this query. So our query was nothing but the db dot users dot here we will give like explain. So it will give you what is going on under the hood when we execute this query. And our query was to find out the pattern for user ID 100. So as you can see, it is pretty much scanning the whole field. 
so as you can see in this plan it is going for a column scan so it will just scan the whole column and find it the value 100 for it so here we are only dealing with 943 records it will not take much time to scan the whole column but if you're dealing with billions of rows definitely this column scan will be a very expensive operation for it so if we just create an index instead of scanning the whole column it will just go to the index and get the required fields which you need so to create an index right away all you have to do is just give like db.users.create index so here the i is capital so just look out for that then in bracket again give like curly braces and give the user id but if you just want the sorted results just give like colon one so it will just sort all this user id in the ascending order so it will make more sense when you are doing sorting operations on this users collection so if we hit enter so as you can see it has created the index for the user id column in the ascending order so if we just re-execute the query again so we will give like explain here so we are just giving the explain on this query where we are searching for the user id 100 so as we can see it is a bit complex to understand but here as you can see it is instead of scanning the whole table it is going for the ix scan which is nothing but index scanning and it is looking for the user id having the value 100 in it so it is just finding the pattern for the 100 user id and it will be way more faster so if we just try to get the same results and to just verify it here we'll give like db.user.find for user id 100 yeah it's still working so this was very important when you're dealing with large amounts of data and if you are working for a company which has their mongodb servers it will definitely help you to optimize your system so you have to make sure that the indexes are created on your tables otherwise it will be a disaster handling all this big data without any indexing and also we can use the aggregate functions on top of our collection so let's say if you want to group the data as per the occupations so the occupations were student executive and all so to just group your data as per occupations of the users and also get the average age for each occupation you can do that so for that just give like db dot users dot here we need to use the aggregate function which will be used for grouping out the data so give like aggregate then just open the bracket give the square bracket and hit enter on the next line so mongodb will automatically detect when this query has not been completed so for better readability just continue on the next line so here just give like curly braces and give the dollar sign and use the group function so here dollar means this group has some special meaning in mongodb so this group is nothing but used for aggregating the data again after grouping it you go give the colon and in bracket you have to give the underscore id so this underscore id is nothing but the unique values provided for each row in the collection so in the previous lecture when we have write down the data from spark to mongodb this underscore id field has automatically created by mongodb and assigned to each rows in the collection so it is just like a unique key for your collection in the mongodb database which if you didn't provide it mongodb will take care of it and assign it to your collection so again give colon in curly braces give so we need occupation right so we need to group the data as per the occupation give the colon and in double quotes you are passing the column name so the column name is occupation right so just complete the curly braces here give comma and also we need the average age for each occupation so we need to display it as a avg h which is average age give colon again open the curly brackets and here we need to use the average function which is dollar sign avg to get the average for the specified field so give again colon and here we need to pass the age column because we need to get the average of the age for each occupation so again for passing that use the dollar h and it looks good so just complete all the curly braces and on the next line complete the square bracket and also round bracket 
so this was a lot of brackets so just look out for the errors and if everything looks good hit enter and that's it so here what we're getting is the occupation for each users and their average age so as you can see for doctor it is 43 for healthcare it is 41 and we have some invalid occupation for none because some users don't want us to know what they do in their day-to-day -day life right so for engineer it's 36 and if you just look out for the student yeah so for student it's pretty low it's 22 which i think is valid i guess and if you just look out for the retired it's 63 age so i think it makes sense we have got some value out of our data so i know this was not the big data it was only around a thousand rows but you have to agree that we have got some value out of it so there is one more function which is get collection infos to get the info for our collection so if we just so as we have already given the use we are in the movie lens database so if we just use this db dot get collection infos so just look out for the capitalization here as you can see we only have the users collection here here we haven't passed in any option so when we are dealing with more number of tables this function will make sense then and i hope you got a clear idea what is the power of mongodb because we don't need hadoop at all to do this simple sorts of operation except of joins because it is not recommended to use the joins on top of the mongodb because this nosql databases are sort of like denormalized so denormalize means so let's say for employees schema it will not have the separate salary table then personal info table or else the professional info table either it will have the different column families so as we've seen in cassandra one table can have multiple column families in which there could be n number of columns present so that's why it is not recommended to use joins on top of this no sql tables or collections but you can just read and write the data way more faster than the oldp and you can also integrate it with the spark to do some interesting stuff so for analytics purpose you can rely on spark to read back the data and run the analytics job on top of your big data and you can have a separate cluster which acts as a storage layer for your application so that was all about the mongodb so in the next lecture we will discuss more about how to select the appropriate database for your application and which factors you need to consider before selecting it so this was all about mongodb and how to use the mongo shell and their different functions so if you're done with all the work it is recommended to just shut down your hdb sandbox by just going into the machine and give like acpi shutdown so it will just shut down your system safely so if you like this lecture please hit subscribe and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below Thanks for watching.